on the news. Ten years after the Chipok school girl's abduction, President Chinobu vows Nigeria will no longer pay ransom. Kano Ward APC suspends Ganduje, but state chapter overturns it. And Nigeria's inflation rate jumps to 33.2% in March 2024. Thank you for joining us on News Now. I am Simisola Atikum. Uh, ten years after the mass abduction of 276 Chibok girls by Boko Haram terrorists, President Bola Tinubu has vowed Nigeria will no longer pay kidnappers ransom. Tinubu, who made this known in a column in Newsweek magazine, said that since the incident, legitimate concerns over kidnappings persist in Africa's most populous country. According to him, resolution through ransom payment only perpetuates the wider problem. He says the extortion racket must be squeezed out of existence while the costs for perpetrators must be raised. The president says to avoid funneling the same people into other crimes that feel insecurity, the government must address the push factors such as poverty, inequality, and a paucity of opportunity in the country. Meanwhile, the Kibaku Area Development Association, Kada, and the Bring Back hashtag, Bring Back Our Girls movement, have issued a strong call to the Nigerian government and the Borno State government to release the recently rescued Chibok schoolgirls to their families. The groups made the call at a press conference held at the Unity Fountain in Abuja in commemoration of the 10th anniversary of the abduction of the Chibok schoolgirls in April 2014. 2V360's Falasha Dolushagun files the report from Abuja. Since the mass adoption of the Chibok girls in 2014, 194 have been rescued, while 82 are still missing and unaccounted for. While condemning the failure of the past administration to return the kidnapped girls, former Minister of Education and co founder of the Bring Back Our Girls movement, Obi Aigili Eze Kwesili, urged the Tinubu led administration to take immediate action to rectify the situation and ensure the girls' safe return to their homes and families. The child of a senator, the child of a member of the House, the child of the governor, the child of the president, the child of the vice president is not in any way superior to any of our Chibok girls. Not one bit. Therefore, everything that needs to be done in order to account for the outstanding girls and bring back as many of them that can still be brought back, everything that must be done to then give closure to this saga, it will never end in our hearts, but at least the actions necessary in order to make it a saga that is not an open wound forever. It's not easy because to miss your daughter is not a uh, traveling or she went to the place where you need. It's not easy. So we are begging them to try again, to try to rescue the remaining children because it's not easy to us. Meanwhile, parents described the campaign of some of the rescue girls who are still undergoing rehabilitation in Meduguri by the state government as a second abduction. They said neither the concept of the girls nor their parents was sought before carrying out the rehabilitation. They also criticized the grouping of the rescue girls with their adopters at the rehabilitation center. Under what guys? And by what legal authority did the Borno State government continue and illegally and obnoxiously use the word marriage between the returnee girls and the so-called so-called repentant terrorists? Number two, how are the girls' voices and or that of their parents or guardians being incorporated into the decision-making processes? about their rehabilitation and reintegration into society. We want to know. Number three, are there support services by the Borno State government specifically tailored to address the psychological and emotional needs of these girls who may have experienced trauma during their captivity? Number four, what measures have the Borno State government 
put in place to ensure the safety and security of the girls, both in Meduguri and Opundia, eventual return to Chuba. Parents Association has threatened legal action against the Borno state government and its officials if they fail to comply with the demand to return the girls to their families. On its part, the BPOG group has urged collaboration with affected families to formulate strategies for closure alongside redesigning the government secondary school in Chibo. Fala Shade Olushegun, reporting for TV360, Abuja. The kidnapping of the Chibok girls in 2014 has been described as a wake-up call to the severe risks children face in the pursuit of education in Nigeria. Reacting to the rising number of school abductions in the country, African Affairs Analyst Achike Chude says the brazen abductions are severely affecting children's learning. He says the government must address not only the symptoms but also the root causes of kidnappings in Nigeria. I'm not entertaining any hope that it is still a priority for the government. Um, uh, it, look, the, 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 there is a disconnection between the government. Yes, people were upset about what happened 10 years ago. And the, the government was at the receiving end of a lot of criticism. And of course, there are so many efforts, international efforts and local efforts to try to rescue the girls and all that. But um, if the question you ask yourself is, how well have they taken care of those who have been rescued? Are those who escaped on their own and uh, you know tried to get back their lives together. The complaints from what we have been reading, you know, uh, what we have been seeing in the media, is that a lot of these people feel absolutely abandoned by the government, and so the government has not been able to respond to their needs. Um, and 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 if that is the position of the government, really, uh, then what? What are the likely scenarios about those people who have been in the forest over 10 years now? They are forgotten. This is my own uh, personal uh, interpretation of what is going on, that the government has moved on. Uh, the, the country has moved on. Unfortunately, um, a lot of Nigerians would want these girls to be rescued. But is government going to commit resources towards that? I'm not sure that the government will. Uh, our government in Nigeria, unfortunately, does not uh, function in that way and manner uh, when it comes to issues that have to do with the welfare of uh, ordinary Nigerians. If you're talking of uh, the children of very powerful people, perhaps the response uh, from government, people who are connected to government, would have been different. Um, but uh, for in terms of uh, the rescue of this, there are so many Nigerians in the bushes. Uh, since uh, Chibok happened, too many Nigerians have been kidnapped. Many of them have been in the bushes for years. And then the government has not been able to rescue them. So I think that uh, the Chibok uh, girls, those ones that have not been uh, rescued, um, are just a data, are just statistics, they're just a number. That's, that's my thinking of it, of what is going on. The State Working Committee of the Kano State Chapter of the All Progressives Congress, APC, has overruled the suspension of the national chairman of the party, Umar Abdullahi Ganduje, by his ward. The state APC has also suspended the ward party leaders who had earlier announced suspension of Ganduje. Ganduje had been suspended by members of his ward in the Dawakin Tofa local government area of Kano State over alleged corruption charges leveled against him by the state government. Meanwhile, the Kano State Attorney General and Commissioner of Justice Harano Dederi has said Ganduje, along with his wife and six others, will face arraignment in court. Nigeria's inflation rate has increased to 33.2% for the month of March 2024. That's according to the latest data from the National Bureau of Statistics, NBS. This represents a 1.5% point increase from the 31.7% recorded in February 2024. The increase in the inflation rate in March was slower compared to the 1.80% increase recorded in February 2024. Inflation in March was driven by an increase in food and beverages coupled with energy and housing costs. Food inflation increased year on year by 2.09 percentage points to 40.01 percent, an increase of 15.56 percentage points from 24.45 percent in March 2023. 
Meanwhile, emergency workers remain at the scene of the fire incident at Dosumu Market on April 9 in Lagos on Sunday, clearing the rubble, among other activities. According to the Public Relations Officer of the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Lasema Nosa Okumbo, the evacuation of the rubble from the self-collapsed and demolished effective buildings is still ongoing. Some buildings self-collapsed under the intensity of the inferno, while 16 others were seriously impacted. Governor Babachide Sowolu, who went on an inspection of the scene of the incident, said buildings that failed integrity tests would be pulled down. Um, we have quite a number of drainages that have already been blocked with shops. I'm sure as you go around, uh, gentlemen of the press, you would be able to show the entire world, you know, what we've removed from the drainage part. And that's why we have also invited, and the Office of Drainage is also here today to make sure that they protect their drainage right of way. Behind me, you have a very beautiful building that when we were young, we saw the building. This, this area is, is where you have the tower clock. They call it um, Ago Tower, you know, in, uh, in Yoruba. You have, it's a very historic area in Lagos Island, not only in Lagos Island, in Lagos State and also Nigeria as a whole. You know, when they are having their festival, they are, this is where the possession starts from. The build and ends. The building behind me, it's a very lovely architectural piece. You know, part of what we need to do is to ensure that some of these structures are restored. You know, we need to conserve them for the future. We need to ensure that they are redeveloped, if possible, renovated, preserved, because they form part and parcel of our history. What you will see is that we have removed attachments from this Idumota area. And you can see all the buildings now. Vehicles can drive through. We, all, we only need to now take care of uh, uh, street trading so that we can see how this can be done in an organized way. It was celebration galore as Golden Gate Group, publishers of West Africa Business Weekly, the first Chinese language media in West Africa, marked its 20th anniversary over the weekend. The West Africa Business Weekly newspaper has been publishing in Nigeria since its establishment in 2003 with over 1,000 publications. Speaking at the event, the Consul, de Consul General of the People's Republic of China in Lagos, Yang Yuxin, said the purpose of the newspaper is to promote cooperation between Africa and China and reflect the voices of the Chinese people. TV360's correspondent Oge Ukekwe has the rest of the story. 20 years of unbroken publication is not meant fit, and the management of West African Business Weekly rolled out the drums to celebrate the remarkable achievement of the first Chinese language publication in West Africa. Guests were treated to captivating Chinese performances of the lion dance and other enthralling displays of traditional Chinese dances. Speaking at the event, principal consultant with Golden Gate Group, Adeshina Agboluaji, used the occasion to encourage the Chinese community to explore more opportunities in the agriculture sector, urging them to expand their contribution beyond their current activities. Agriculture is very essential both to you and to ourselves. Nigeria has not reached the level of agriculture we wanted. But as of now, we can feed ourselves, or we can do a lot better. And with the advancement in agriculture in China and with cooperation we can establish together, we can do much better. Our target in this government, under President Tinubu, now not only wants to feed Nigeria, we want to feed Africa. Another area that the government is very much interested in the next four, eight years is the area of developing gas. Using gas for whether for fertilizer, using gas for CNG, LNG using gas for generating power. On her part, the Consul General of the People's Republic of China in Lagos, Yang Yujin, said the newspaper has played the role of a platform for reporting local news, conveying the voices of compatriots in Nigeria, a window for spreading Chinese culture, a bridge for enhancing mutual understanding and friendly exchange between China and Nigeria. Right, uh, right way and the international airport and so on. But I think that uh, we have a big uh, potential of cooperation between our two countries. So in the future, we hope that uh, we can together develop the industrialization, agricultural modernization, and uh, vocabulary 
uh, uh, quality education and uh, uh, digital economy, yes, like uh, smart uh, uh, governance and uh, green, uh, uh, low carbon, sustainable development, and so on. Publisher of the West African Business Weekly, Chief Jacob Wood, told the audience the purpose of the newspaper is to let the people in China understand Nigeria and Africa better, and also educate the people in China about Nigeria and West African business relations. Our newspapers for 20 years, of course, very difficult. For financing, for many people, we need the people's support. But we still insist, we still continue, we still determined to do it. We're looking forward for another 20 years, for another 1,000 editors. We want to, the people exchange their minds, let people understand the Nigerians, people understand China. The event featured a documentary film on West African Business Weekly Journal for 20 years, highlights in historical part and its role in promoting weekly reports in business between Nigeria and China. Oge Chikuke with TV360 Lagos. We'll take a break here, but coming up, National Grid collapses again, third time in 2024. Stay with us for details of this story and others. Welcome back. Here's a recap of our top stories. Ten years after the mass abduction of 276 Chibok girls by Boko Haram terrorists, President Bola Tinubu has vowed Nigeria will no longer pay kidnappers ransom. Tinubu, who made this known in a column in Newsweek magazine, said that since the incident, legitimate concerns over kidnappings persist in Africa's most populous country. He says the extortion racket must be squeezed out of existence while the costs for perpetrators must be raised. We also told you that the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, Abdullahi Ganduje, has been suspended by members of his ward, the Ganduje Ward in the Dawakin Tofa local government area of Kano State, following alleged corruption charges leveled against him by the state government. According to reports, Ganduje is set to face charges in court on Wednesday, April 17, 2024, regarding allegations of bribery, diversion, and misappropriation of funds. And in case you missed any of our news bulletins of more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV and AVO TV or log on to our website on www.tv316nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV316Nigeria or download our mobile app on Google Play Store, Huawei App Gallery and Apple Store on Facebook or TV360 online. Let's now join Joy Uchejim, who is on standby with Business News. Over to you, Joy. Thank you, Simi. Welcome to Business News. Nigeria's national electricity grid collapsed early on Monday, plunging the nation into total darkness. According to data from the Transmission Company of Nigeria, the four generation companies recorded zero megawatts generation from around 2 a.m. on Monday. The data further shows that the load allocation to discos currently stands at a mega 250 megawatts. 
Reacting to the incessant collapse of the national grid, the lead consultant on private sector development, ECOWAS Commission, Ken Ife, says excess load must be shared from the main grid and placed on smaller grids. He says the federal government needs to invest in solar power to reduce pollution. This is a wake-up call to Nigerians to just go for take power to the to the mass market. We have to take. I, this was a call that I made within two weeks of the Buhari administration. I went that call. I said to a major conference within two. I said, take power to the mass market. Let people remove tax on solar related items. Let them let them invest. You, I'm sure you may have three houses, one in Lagos, one in your village, and one in, in somewhere in one township somewhere. You can only sleep in one house at any one time. And so the rest of the power you have other places could be sold to the grid. So there are people that will prefer to use their money instead of running generator and not having anything back and causing pollution, invest it in solar. As long as the government will say, okay, in the, in the short term, let us bankroll the cost of a meter, you know, hybrid meter that will take this electricity back into the grid and pay them for the electricity, for generating electricity. And then people will begin to see value in investing in alternative uh, energy supply sources. Still on business, the Nigeria Customs Service and the Customs Administration of Benin Republic have deliberated on strategies aimed at amplifying trade activities between the two countries. In a press statement by the National Public Relations Officer, Abdullahi Maiwada, the collaboration was also to ensure seamless implementation of recommendations previously discussed during their rendezvous in Cotonou. He disclosed the framework was established at a higher level by the authorities of the heads of state, President Patrice Talon of Benin and President Bola Tinubu of Nigeria both expressed a desire to work together. I will take a short break and be back with stock market reports. Welcome back. Nigeria's equities market opened this week on a negative note, down by 300 billion naira, or 0.53%, with the market cap reducing to about 75 trillion naira at the close of trading on Monday. Now, Fidelity Bank led the Losers League after its share price lowered by just one naira from 10 naira to 9 naira, followed by Jay's Bank, which closed the day at 2 naira, 0.5 Kobo, from 2 naira, 25 Kobo. Now, altogether, 125 listed equities participated in trading, ending with 10 gainers and 33 losers at the end of the first weekday of trading on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. A total of 326 million volume of shares were exchanged in 10,777 deals, equating to a market value of about 7 billion naira. Now let's take a look at our select global stock. It's a similar case as well for the foreign equities, as the UK FTSE and the Japan's Nikkei ended today's trade in the bears at 0.38% and 0.74%, uh, leaving just the US Dow Jones in the bulls, gaining about 0.097%. That's it on both business and stock market reports. Back to you, Simi, for the rest of the news. Thank you. In other stories, floods have killed 58 people in Tanzania over the last two weeks, spurring the East African country to seek an answer in major infrastructure projects. The government announced the death toll late on Sunday as heavy rains continue to lash the country. April marks the peak of Tanzania's rainy season and it has been exacerbated this year by the EI Nino phenomenon, which has caused droughts and floods across the globe. According to authorities, Tanzania has plans to construct 14 dams to prevent flooding in the future. Meanwhile, Sweden has launched the trial of a former Syrian army officer over his alleged role in war crimes committed in 2012 during the country's civil war. The case against uh, Brigadier General Mohamed Hamo, who resides in Sweden, opened on Monday. The trial is one of a very small number thus far, high-ranking Syrian government or military officials, uh, despite efforts in Europe to implement justice against those responsible for human rights abuses during Syria's 13-year civil war. 
and on sports, the Super Falcons of Nigeria will start their campaign at the 2024 Olympic Games against Brazil on Thursday, July 25. The Group C encounter will hold at the Stade Matmot Atlantique Bordeaux. The three-time African champions will come up against world champion Spain in their second group on Saturday, July 28. The Super Falcons are making a return to the Olympics after a 16-year absence. Still on sports, the Squirrels of Benin Republic will host the Super, uh, Super Eagles of Nigeria in a 2026 FIFA World Cup qualifying match day four tie at the Felix Wilfred Boini Stadium, Abidjan, in June. The Super Eagles will host the Bafana Bafana of South Africa on Friday, June 7, before the clash with the Squirrels. The three-time African champions are yet to record a win in the qualifiers with two draws from their opening two games against Lesotho and Zimbabwe. Well, that's all on news now. Many thanks for watching. See you next time.